in about the 1970s, when timber harvest was pretty predominant, the larger shuttlecock watershed was harvested. At the same time, people believed that trees and large wooded debris and sort of things like that were detrimental to fisheries populations and kind of hampered their spawning ability. And so they bulldozed and removed a lot of the trees from the streams. It didn't take long after they started pulling wood out of the stream to realize, oh, all our pool habitat's gone. This stretch of stream for this channel type should probably have about 50 pools, and right now it has three. The goal of this project is to reintroduce the wood, add wood back to the system to get the pool habitat back in here, protect the banks, get our width to depth ratio back in line. Having these resting areas and rearing habitat for the coho is really gonna increase the survivability of coho populations. You know, we build their home, they will come. They're stacking the logs uh, in the river. Our inspector's telling Dad that's in the backhoe where to put them and how to put them there. And Tyler just brings the logs across here and hands them to Dad. And then Tad picks them up and sets them in the river. The Forest Service figures are supposed to be about 13 pools per mile. And here in this river, there's only like two. That's not a lot, so that's why we're doing this. It's for the fish. We got the bank here, and with the still water there, that's where the coho fry are gonna lay. Water will come down over the structure and wall out the bottom of that structure and create an area for them to rest, where there's not super large, fast current washing them down and out the river. The logs laying across are for when big currents come by and we get big rains and the banks raise, and that those will try to hold everything in place. There's some logs that are actually buried into the bank that also act as anchors. Soon this will all fill in with water and the gravel and cinder will all flush out of here and it will create a nice pool for a fry to sit in. My job is uh, just to put what we call it's boom. I'm not really sure why it's called that. I didn't name it. And it's absorbent pads and you string them across the river so that the hydraulic hose breaks, the oil or whatever it is that's going down the river, it'll get caught on the boom. Usually with this kind of equipment, you try to avoid the rivers, but these are filled with uh, bio oil, it's called, and it's, it's basically drinkable. All equipment that enters the stream or gets near the stream, all their hydraulic fluids are replaced with a, a vegetable-based petroleum. So if we do have any leaks, it's a lot more friendly on the environment. Some of these projects, they look like it's creating a substantial amount of damage initially while we're doing the project, but they really speed up the recovery of these streams much more quickly than you would otherwise find if we just didn't do anything. Within you know, less than a decade, we're seeing almost complete recovery and the creation of pools and spawning areas and different habitats. We're seeing that within just a few years. You know, this isn't a, okay, now we fixed it, it's done. It's kind of an intermediate step. This wood here isn't gonna last forever. You know, these should last 50 years or so. Then the thought is that these riparian trees will be big enough and then we might start getting some natural recruitment. And then at that point, it'll be self-sustaining. So it's just, it's all for the fish. And we like the fish around here, so. So that's why we're doing this. Thank you.